This is our four poster deer treatment bait station used at Highland Hill Farm. You can come to the farm and see how we have this set up. This is a demonstration unit that we have showing deer eating at the feeder. The feeder has a trough and it also has a hopper that feeds the trough and limits the amount of corn being used. This is a picture of a deer before treatment by the USDA at their test station. This is a deer after treatment at the USDA test station. The deer bait station has four paint rollers on it which rub against the ears of the deer while they're eating. It's an efficient way to kill ticks on your property. This bait station has killed up to 98% of the deer ticks in an area. It's recommended that you use one feeding station for every 40 acres to get adequate coverage for your property. This feeder uses only, and I repeat only, whole clean corn. And the deer will only eat about one and a half pounds of whole clean corn per deer per day. So it's not that much per deer to feed these deer and treat them. The storage bin for the corn on the, the deer bait station can tell you how many pounds of feed are being consumed by the deer. This relates directly to the amount of pesticide you're going to apply to the paint rollers. You need to follow the directions on the label to figure out how much pesticide to apply to the rollers. It's not difficult. It's very easy to do. This is the applicator gun. By squeezing this, fluid will be sucked up through this tube that goes into the can. This is the pesticide. Follow the application directions and wear gloves. This is a new unit, so it's not dirty. But you'll, you'll draw in the amount of pesticide needed, and then you'll just push it down on top of the paint roll. So it's very easy to use. If you have any questions about it, read the directions. The directions are thorough. When placing corn in the feeder, do it on a dry day so the corn does not get moldy. Deer will not eat moldy corn and moldy corn won't flow through the system to the troughs where the deer feed. We like to keep track of the amount of corn that is consumed because with the knowledge of the amount of corn consumed, we can figure out using our pesticide label how much pesticide to add to the paint rollers. Also, we like to make sure that in the trough where the deer feed, there isn't much corn. When there's a lot of corn, they can eat it fast and they don't get as much of the pesticide on their ears. We want them to work at the station to get the pesticide on their ears. We check the pesticide. We check the station once a week to make sure that the hopper where the deer feed from is clean and that the corn will flow out that we have corn in our storage bin and that we have the correct amount of pesticide on the paint roller applicators. In this manner, deer in your neighborhood will become your tick killing machines. The efficiency of this feeder in eliminating ticks in an area can be upwards to 98%. A 98% reduction in ticks will mean that you'll, your likelihood of catching the Lyme disease will dramatically go down. This is Mr. Instant Privacy. Yes, you can have instant privacy when you plant the emerald arborvita. It's a narrow pyramidal evergreen displaying dense emerald foliage. It holds its color well throughout the winter. It's an excellent medium to large screening hedge or privacy shrub. It usually grows to about 12 to 15 feet tall, but can be kept and maintained from 6 to 12 foot as you so desire. Its only major drawback is that it is deer eaten. If you have a lot of deer, it's not the plant for you. Also, it needs full sun and does not like wet soils. If you need some, call us at Highland Hill Farm. These are two foot emerald greens at Highland Hill Farm. 
They're in number three pots and they're ready for pickup. Give us a call if you need any, 215-651-8329. Thank you. This is one of my favorite new arborvitas that's just come out on the market. It's a plant patent number 19267 from Ball Ornamentals. It's called Forever Goldie. And it is a western red cedar type of arborvita. We grow these from small liners that we buy. We have to buy these because it's plant patented and we pay a plant patent fee for each arborvita that we grow and raise and sell. We put these in small pots and pot them up and then we will pot them out in the field and we will also have them in larger three gallon pots for sale. This plant is an excellent plant for your patio or the back of a border. It has great orange color in the fall. It's upright, drought tolerant. It's an evergreen featuring scented foliage and it has heat resistance. Oh, what more could you ask for? Yes, it is good for borders, screens, garden beds, landscapes, and large mixed containers. It grows to 15 to 20 feet with a spread of three to four foot. And incidentally, unlike the green giant, which is zone hardy to zone five, this is zone hardy to zone four. So it has even better cold hardiness than the green giant. So give us a call if you want some at Highland Hill Farm. We're on Route 313 in Fountainville, PA, and we do deliver and plant the Forever Goldie Arborvita. Be prepared for another cold winter. The myth of the Arctic meltdown. Stunning satellite images now show as of August 2014 the summer ice cap is thicker and covers 1.7 million square kilometers more than two years ago. This is despite Al Gore's prediction that there would be no ice by now seven years after Al Gore's warning. The Arctic ice cap has expanded for its second year in a row and has grown to an area twice the size of Alaska, the biggest state which was open water two years ago and is now ice covered. Nowhere indicates trees are at risk from global cooling. Thus, we recommend that you plant green giants instead of Leyland cypresses in USDA plant zone 6.